Hey guys, it's Matt Winning at winningstrength.com and today we are going to talk about thoughts before you squat. Now, back in my younger days when I was in my teens, I didn't think of any of this. Now that I have a master's degree in biomechanics and I've been training people for 20 plus years and broke some records, now I start to realize this was everything and I should have been thinking about these particular topics. So let's get to it. that we have to understand is that the squat is a multiple multiple joint movement this means that the lower back the hips and the knees pretty much the entire body is constantly involved in the movement with that being said most people walk into a gym with innate imbalances why well we don't do a lot of physical activity anymore right so we don't have people out bailing hay most people don't have a high level of muscle mass and most people live a sedentary uh, lifestyle which leads to a lot of different issues especially in some of these particular areas we're going to go over today that may not want to put a barbell straight on their back right away so let's go over some of those areas well first of all we have the knee and the knee is comprised of let's make it simple the quad and hamstring now that quadricep to hamstring ratio needs to be pretty close can it be one to one well, I'm not sure. If you don't start at maybe four or five years old in a lot of gymnastics and tumbling classes and somebody's really smart, the chances of your hamstring to quadricep ratio being close to one to one is nearly impossible. But there are papers to show that once that quadricep to hamstring ratio becomes greater or less than 62, 63%, your knee injuries go through the roof. Why? You have an imbalance at the knee. Well, if you bring somebody in and teach them with a straight bar squat, those imbalances are gonna be very, very prevalent. How do they come about? Well, a lot of it, in my opinion, is you see the knee come way over the toe and you see the knees buck way in to the midline of the body. With that problem, that's automatically usually telling me that the hamstrings are not doing their job and that the brain only knows how to use the quadricep. Now, the problem with that is, is that usually most people today, especially, have no glute activation. So when their glutes don't fire, the only thing that will allow them to squat is their back and their knee. And that creates a lot of problems. They're gonna lean way over, their knee's gonna go way over their toe. Why? They're trying to leg press the weight. They don't know how to use the posterior chain. The posterior chain is almost completely degenerated and shut off. So by sitting on your glutes all day, um, not training your lower back and having a fit lower back, these are gonna be the areas that are gonna be really shining problems in when you try to teach somebody a bilateral movement, especially in a compressive state. So usually in this particular position, the lower back, the torso and abs, mostly the TVA in my opinion, or transverse abdominis, are not ready to stabilize and brace. This is gonna cause a major issue down the road, and there's gonna be these little small technical factors. The problem with the human body, in my opinion, is that the human body likes to do things the way it thinks they can do it the best right now. Well, that may not be good in five, six, eight months. So the problem with is something that feels natural when you first start to do it may or may not be the right way to do things, okay? So when we start thinking about the squat, we have to understand it's a bilateral movement. With training tons of firemen and tons of normal people as well as powerlifters, what I have found is that there is a humongous imbalance from left to right, somewhere in the range of about 15%. This means that your right leg is 15% stronger than your left or vice versa. Well, here's the problem with that. In a bilateral movement, you're only as strong as your weakest side, but you're also gonna show the weak side when it gets heavy or it gets explosive. That means that a knee's gonna buck in or you're gonna round a certain way. You're gonna do something that's off. And by doing something that's off, it's not only gonna lower your ability to perform, it's also gonna enhance your ability to get injured. So you have to develop a right to left balance and try to get this as close, in my opinion, to 5% as you can before you can really start really loading bilateral movements. But the problem is, is most people skip this step. Uh, Mike Boyle talks a lot about this and we've shot a paper on this from uh, over in Australia. But unilateral and bilateral movements have to be intertwined with each other. But in my personal opinion, if I could have started training all over again, 
I think I would have been even stronger in the squats if I would have had a better left to right balance when I first started to lift. Remember that I got hit by a car and then my right leg was in cast six months longer than my left, so it was already behind the game by the time I learned to walk again. I didn't know any of this, but here's the thing, is most people still have an imbalance even if they don't have that level of injury. So what are some imbalances that are common? Well, the problem is, is that here's the deal. Some things come from the spine. So we have this spinal issue. This would be looking at somebody from the side, and this would be looking at somebody from the back. We could have this, what I call computer desk position. This is very common today uh, for people just having indoor jobs. Then we could also have some scoliosis issues. These are things that you can see just walk, somebody walking into the gym. But an average kid doesn't know what this is and they're gonna spinal load on this, which is gonna create a lot of vertebral spinal issues. So you have to check that out first. The next thing that I would do that the Bulgarians did 50, 60 years ago, how do I know this? I train a guy from Bulgaria here right in the gym as an older guy, and he told me that the Olympic Committee guys would go around and find the kids that were athletic and explosive, and then they would actually go do an x-ray on their hip sockets at like six, seven years old to see how they were developing. If the hip socket looked completely round and perfect in anatomical positioning, then they would start the process of teaching them to Olympic lift. If their femoral head looked way off and was way crooked or something was not set right, they wouldn't even train them. And the reason is, they're not gonna make it to the loading level. But how many people have you ever talked to that said, oh yeah, we, we went and took the kids and had their hips x-rayed to make sure that they're not gonna destroy themselves to pieces by doing any kind of loading like of that nature? You don't. It just becomes a huge problem and then they get a hip replacement and you know all those factors. So everything has to have an alignment pattern. So I'm not here to scare you guys away from doing back squats. Obviously, I love back squats, and back squats have helped me out tremendously out of my career, made me a profession, and also made me semi-famous in the lifting realm. But the thing of it is, is that if I had to do it all over again, I would have took some of this into consideration, and I would have, the most important thing I would have done, the things I could fix, is I would have went back and made sure this hamstring to quadricep ratio was optimal. I would have made sure that I had proper glute functioning, and I would have made sure that my lower back and torso and abs would have been prepared for lifting before I actually started the barbell. But this is very advanced information that the average gym goer will not understand or know. But now it's not my fault that you don't know it. We're gonna go into more of this on Patreon. So I hope you guys that are super serious about training are gonna come in and see how I would develop a squat from ground zero. Talk to you guys soon and please visit winningstrength.com and Patreon.